Hey, it's Chris, and I'm guessing that by now you already know all the big, huge, major, giant new features coming to iOS 12, the stuff that Apple announced on stage that everyone's already been talking about, but there's some other stuff you kind of discover as you go along that's a little bit subtler, but still enhances your life, and that's the kind of stuff that I want to talk about in today's video. At the end of this video, please leave me a comment and let me know what subtle, under-the-radar iOS 12 feature is your favorite, whether I covered it in this video or something that I completely missed. And don't forget to check out all the links down in the description. I found some cool new iPhone accessories, and I'm always excited to share those with you guys. Also, if you want iOS 12, you don't want to wait for the public release, you don't have the public beta yet, I just made a video telling you how to get it on your phone, on your iPad. Go check it out. It's the last video I made, or I'll link it up down below. Also, I should just say, it seems like not as many people have been getting the videos right away, so if you don't want to miss Unbelievably Useful, Insanely Inspiring, all the new series that I'm developing, there's several, plus any of the other videos that are here on Daily Tech that you know and love, make sure to hit that bell icon so you get them for sure. Now here's a tip for you. If you've got an iPad Pro and you need a place to stash your Apple Pencil, you might be interested in today's sponsor, Zugu Case. There's a lot to like about this case, including a robust bumper for major drop protection, a cover with sleep and wake functionality, a magnetic kickstand with eight different viewing angles, and perhaps my favorite part, the built-in Apple Pencil storage. So the first tip today is one that I'm really excited about, it has to do with Apple Music. If you've ever been out somewhere and you hear a song and you don't know what it is, it gets stuck in your head and you wanna to listen to it later, but you don't know the name of the song, this is gonna be helpful. So now in Apple Music, if you go to search for something, you can actually type in the lyrics to the song and it will bring up the song that you're searching for. It's a simple thing, it's just a little thing, but it's something that I see myself using quite a bit. I'm guessing as somebody who subscribes to this channel or is interested in Apple stuff that you probably already know about the new screen time feature, which is designed to help you, you know, get some work done and pay attention to the people that are like two feet away from you instead of just being glued to your phone all the time. But you might not realize that there's a screen time widget now which is automatically activated when you install iOS 12 and added to the bottom of your widget screen. So if you wanna see that info without digging around in your phone settings, then that's actually pretty useful, but you might wanna move it up towards the top of your widgets. This is cool to me because screen time is awesome, but the worst part about it was that it was sort of buried in your settings. I almost thought they should have made it a separate app until I found out about this widget, and this makes total sense. Big fan. Something else I'm loving about iOS 12 on the iPhone 10 is the ability to swipe up and give Face ID another try whenever it fails. So the thing is, Face ID has been pretty good for me. I definitely prefer it over Touch ID for getting into my phone, although it's not flawless. There's some times where I'm still punching in my passcode more than I want to. So this is definitely a welcome addition. Something else that's cool for iPhone 10 users is the ability to now scan a second Face ID or do a second face scan, whatever you want to call it. Why does this matter? Because people's appearances change all throughout the day. They don't look the same all the time. And I'm gonna be honest, I know this dude who wears those nose strips in order to breathe better, snore less at night. When he wakes up, Face ID doesn't always work because he looks a little bit different. It's not me. At WWDC, Apple made a pretty big deal about the new Do Not Disturb enhancements, which you can turn on in the settings like bedtime mode. But I think it's a little bit less obvious how to enable the time-based or location-based Do Not Disturb. So all you have to do is 3D touch on the Do Not Disturb moon icon in the control center to get those options, which are Do Not Disturb for one hour, until this evening, or until I leave this location. I also don't know if everyone knows that you can now use Animoji and Memojis live in FaceTime, which is pretty cool, because maybe you don't want to be like actually on camera or something for whatever reason, or maybe you just want to look like a Memoji. I don't know, but it's cool. You can do it live. One of the best features in iOS 12 is definitely group notifications. Really enjoying that. But there are certain notifications that actually work better individually or non-group, like video doorbell or security notifications, where you might want to see those pictures without having to dig around. So now in iOS 12, you have a lot of control over how notifications appear, either grouped or individually. You can change that in the settings for notifications, or if you just swipe on a notification, and hit manage. And from there, you can also tell notifications to deliver quietly where they won't make any noise or disturb you. They'll just show up in Notification Center, which I'm also really a big fan of. Maybe that's too mainstream of a tip for this video, so I'm not really gonna talk about it. Although, I just did, so. Whoops. Apple News has also been redesigned. I use it all the time. It's my main news source, and I've really curated it to be as personalized and useful as possible. So yes, I really like this redesign. Specifically, I like how much easier it is to browse my favorite sources and to rearrange them, and I really love that I can add a Siri shortcut to a specific source. Another kind of cool under the radar thing is that you can now set up a QR code shortcut for your camera in the control center. I don't use QR codes all that much, maybe like once every 900 days, but in the next three years, whenever I do, then I'll be ready. Something else I'm gonna be using a lot more often though is the new messages tapbacks feature 
in notifications. So you could always do tap backs, which is like when you click on a message and you give it like a heart or a high five or a ha ha, or <laughs> I don't even know it all, but just like quick little fast responses. You could always do that in messages, the app, but not notifications. So now you can do that in notifications. Finally, last but not least, but kind of least, which is why it's last, is there's a brand new wallpaper and it's nothing exciting. It's not even a live wallpaper, but it looks kind of cool. If you want to switch things up and you're bored of whatever you've got, there's a new wallpaper for you. So new wallpaper, last feature. If you don't know already, I'm doing a giveaway every month. Win a new Apple gift card. The link is down below. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K -K, in both of those places. And I'll catch you in the next video. By the way, Insanely Inspiring Apple Setups episode number two is coming up. Leave me a comment if you watched all the way to the end and you're excited about that. Okay, I'll catch you in the next video. Later.